Hello, my name is Danae Montgomery, and today I'll be talking about New York City's serving size cap through the lens of policy analysis. Before we even begin to talk about that, let's figure out exactly what the size cap is. Let's act out a scenario. You go to any basic fast food place because it's fast and it's cheap. You order whatever it is you want, and they ask you, what size? In this case, we'll be talking about sugar-sweetened beverages, also known as SSBs, such as soft drinks. But today, what are SSBs? Good question. SSBs are defined as non-alcoholic beverages that have added sugar or another caloric sweetener and have more than 25 calories per eight fluid ounces. Exceptions include diet beverages, fruit or vegetable juices without added sugar, unsweetened coffees and teas, water, and beverages with the milk content above 50%. SSBs are 7% of the average diet in America and the single largest source of dietary sugar, with there being seven to 10 teaspoons of sugar in a 12 ounce, with there being seven to 10 teaspoons of sugar in a 12 ounce soda and 4.2 grams of sugar in a teaspoon, there's nothing really healthy about it. Now, back to our scenario. The sizes we typically choose from are small, medium, and large. Let's say you'd wanna get a large, so that's around 32 ounces. What if you only got the option for 16 ounces? Let me explain why this idea was brought to light. The serving size cap was seen as a public health problem as well as an economic problem. Its aim was SSBs, specifically fountain drinks. The target was sugar, and its focus was on diabetes and other dietary related diseases. Public health spending was on average $400,000 due to the cost of cases of diabetes. Policy formation. Regulation capped SSB serving sizes at 16 ounces. This would only apply to businesses under the jurisdiction of the NYC government, such as restaurants, mobile food vendors, stadium and movie concession stands. It was enforced by the city's Department of Health and Mental Hygiene and the Department of Consumer Affairs. Policy legitimization. I will now introduce to you Mayor Mike Bloomberg, the person who introduced the cap in the first place. Now, Bloomberg was seen as a billionaire mayor with little obligation to interest groups in the city and appeared to have a top-down approach. He didn't feel the need to reach out to communities to explain the proposed policy and gain their support, which ended in him failing to build a coalition of support. For example, BIPOC public health NGOs and BIPOC anti-poverty NGOs. He didn't use the right messenger within these communities. Racial tensions that stemmed from the eight years of Mayor Giuliani's administration made building trust in communities of color difficult. Now it's time to frame the issue. In one corner, we have the Public Health Coalition, which includes the Mayor's Office, the Board of Health, and public health experts. In the other corner, we have the Industry Coalition, which includes soda corporations, the restaurant industry, distributors, and the movie theater industry, as well as many more. Let's see how this works out. The Public Health Coalition framed public health, but more deeply structural and racial inequality, corporate greed, community health, and family. The diabetes crisis wasn't seen as just a medical problem, but a social justice problem as well. The Industry Coalition framed individual freedom, small businesses and jobs, as well as race and class. They hired Goddard, they hired Goddard Gunster, now Gunster Strategies Worldwide, which is a PR and lobbying firm. The company produced advertisements that framed grassroots, race, class, small businesses, and inequality. They made several fake grassroots campaigns and are referred to as AstroTurf campaigns. Policy Implementation The soda industry challenged the legality of the regulation in the courts. Its legal challenge was based on two main arguments. One, its proposal violated the separation of powers doctrine and that it wasn't rational because of too many loopholes. Regulation passed on March 12th of 2012. Regulation passed on March 12th of 2012 and was to go into effect on March 12th of 2013. The day before its implementation, the New York Supreme Court struck the regulation down. They said the Board of Health exceeded its regulatory authority, that it was arbitrary and capricious and would lead to uneven enforcement. They also said the cap would cause a significant limit on the personal autonomy of the city's residents. Policy evaluation. The serving size cap was never implemented, so it's not possible to use data to evaluate its success or failure. Based on the theoretical evidence, 
a case could be made that it likely would have had some positive effects on public health. Policy change. The lighthouse idea is the simple idea of how an increase in a certain activity causes a chain reaction that leads to more activity than the original increase. The process had a positive effect in terms of public health awareness in the city. Evidence on public education campaign success is not that great.